Holy shit! <laughs> We're back. Opening with a big curse word. No YouTube monetization for this video. Fuck. <laughs> That's right. Not family friendly. Not advertiser friendly. It's the Digital Press Podcast. Epis and we're back. Episode what? Oh, don't make yeah, me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Season We should start something, using letters. Episode something. Yeah. Season A, episode beta. This is actually a prequel episode. No, yeah. you should, you should, no, you should just all just... Talk, just move your mouth, and then we'll dub it in later. Yeah, there you, go. <laughs> yeah. you, you move your mouth, and I'll dub it. Episode. Be like Voltron. <laughs> or uh, the Thunderbirds puppets. Oh, yeah. So, a lot has happened in the past, what, five months since we've uh, yep. done an episode. Again, I've escaped death. Yep. I'm literally like a video game character. The hearts keep running out, and, and I manage to just find a uh, treasure chest at the last minute. So I'm back again, and I, knock wood, hopefully I can make it through a year without any kind of crazy medical complications, and you guys can, all ten of you can keep enjoying uh. continued episodes of the Digital Press Podcast. Our super fan uh, was asking me the other day <laughs> how I'm doing, when are we going to be recording an episode again, so this one's for you. It's always for you. Steve's well, the only fan. I'm not sure <laughs> Is listening. He just has multiple accounts. Or Frankie is better. just the real life version of that horrible uh, Johnny Depp movie where they tried to transfer his consciousness. Benny and June? Yeah. If I do die, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll transfer my consciousness into my iPad. Nice. And, you know. That'll just make everything easier. Yep. That's right. Can record the episodes. And, and when we're done, we'll just put you in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a lot has happened in the world of. Um, micro console gaming, I guess, as it's come, you know, the genre, the emerging genre of small boxes with uh, non proprietary operating systems that run ROMs, right? Wait a minute, you're not talking about the miniature game boxes of classic systems? Not, well, uh, you mean like the NES Classic? No. <laughs> the, the Atari. Uh, the literally, the, the miniature game boxes. Have we ever talked about that? Mm. I don't think so. No, uh, I think that these Please are. Please enlighten our viewers. No, they're. I forget. What they, I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head. But they're basically people had. They've been making. Let's say like a you know there's an NES action set box, which is normally like yay big. Mm -hmm. Somebody is printing like a oh. cardboard box about this big. Oh yeah. And they sell them, and then you put them on their shelf. It's like a it's like a Funko. Yeah, yeah. I get it. You, it goes with your action figures and that for shelf queens. I don't know. I know. I don't. I just don't know if those are if they. I don't think they're licensed or anything like no. that. No, but that's stupid. One no. day, <laughs> no. One day, we are we're talking about a different type of Atari box. We're talking about the Atari box. Oh, no. From the current IP holders at Atari. Uh, you know, they don't just make matchbox cars <laughs> and T-shirts that you can find in Target uh, and belt buckles and little LCD games. They, they are coming back strong <laughs> with the Atari box, which we... I'll, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll give, I'll give them credit. It's a gorgeous-looking... A piece of plastic. It's a gorgeous looking well, render. I don't think we've seen a physical thing. Yeah, it's thing not yet. plastic. Oh, okay. it's, well, yeah. a gorgeous looking 3D concept. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's got wood grain on one model and Vader black on the other model, and uh, it, 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 it's reminiscent of an Atari 2600. It's got the, the grill uh, look yeah. that everybody who's ever thrifted for an Atari 2600 knows. You gotta bring it home, bust out the toothbrush and the foaming cleanser. Yeah. Get in that grill. A Q-tip is the right size. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, or I've seen people that take them apart and put them in dishwasher. Oh, yeah. I see it all the, the plastic. Time. Like I, I don't know. That's I, so I feel like my dishwasher work? would melt it. Yeah. But also, like that's so much work. Yeah. Like how? What could it have gone through that you have to disinfect it to that extent? I can't imagine that's a good. For, I mean. 
the, the plastic can't time. be it, that plastic yeah. dishwasher <laughs> safe probably eh, I don't, I don't know. know so no, a, well I wouldn't put it in a dishwasher I mean you could ri- like rinse it out in a sink or something yeah right? mm-hmm. yeah yeah, but no, I, I see people who literally put them in dishwashers. It's yeah, they'll crazy. take pictures of it too and be like, clean it my shit. To-. I see people that do it to stuff that they've owned for years and have already done this to, and it's like, what are you doing to it that you feel the need that you have to get your own essence off of it? I've seen people put uh, gaming computer motherboards in dishwashers. That's crazy. Yes, I've seen that with um, arcade repairs too. And they say as long as it's completely dry. And it's and the only thing and that it touches it, prior. yeah, is water. Uh, and it, yeah, if it has no no capacitors that are cracked open that yeah. would like you know burst uh, when it would come into contact with anything, it's yeah. it's a safe apparently a safe way. Yeah. Like it's, it's all silicone and or silicon. Ah, I, I just I'll just open it up, crank up the air compressor. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the weirdest thing I see too is with the CRT people with the arcade machines, they take their tubes out. They don't put that in the dishwasher. No, they bring it to their front yard. Oh, they blast the hose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then they let it sit out in the sun all day, and it's like so weird to me. But it, it doesn't seem right. Like you never would think. Uh, like you know, if you grew up in the seventies or eighties, you, you wouldn't think of. Taking apart your old tube TV and blasting <laughs> yeah. it with the garden hose for maintenance. But, Throw it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Buy another, but, one. buy another one. Put it on top of the old. It's one. one of those things you see it at first and you're like, wait, no. And then if you know anything about it and you think about it, you're like, that's not a bad idea. I don't know. So, Atari, the Atari box. It's going to be a uh, Linux based. Who owns Atari now? It's the same people. Mm-hmm. Whoever's owned the IP for it's info info ground. Yeah, or whatever. This is people that have been doing it since the flashback came out. Yeah, I think. It's in, it's in um, Paris. They are, France, you know, I mean, they're essentially they're just a licensor of the IP. At yeah, this point. but they're more reliable, and it's not like the Coleco IP. Where, oh no, yeah, no, this they, is I mean, like a company that they're very good at making Matchbox cars, or, or, <laughs> or whatever they are. They're, you know, you you can't. You can't miss those things. You mm-hmm. can find those things at every drugstore, supermarket, Five Below, yeah. Hot Topic, yeah. uh, eBay, Page, everything. They've everywhere. shown that they're not too protective of the IP, but also not stupid enough that they're not just blowing... They're making money. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they know how to... You know, it's like... Well, it's like when Marvel uh, came close to going bankrupt in the early 2000s. They essentially became the juggernaut that they are to become attractive enough for Disney to purchase them. Mm-hmm. They did that by not by making more comic books or making better comic mm-hmm. books or anything with comic books at all. What they did was they took all their popular characters and they for, at first they sold their company to Toy Biz. Mm-hmm. Marvel uh, were like, we're, we make more money selling action figures to kids mm-hmm. than we do selling comics. So Toy Biz clearly knows what they're doing. And then when Toy Biz eventually... Bit the big one uh, in in a in an oversaturated market of toys and action figures. Then you know uh, Marvel decided to get into the movie business, and you know, the rest is history. You know Marvel movies, beginning with Blade, I think, uh, have generally been all profit wielding. There was no, there was never any. Yeah, Marvel hasn't really had a flop yet. And the MCU now, and now Marvel is so rich with cash that they want to buy back all the properties mm-hmm. that they have like licensed out you know they mm-hmm. they get lucky w- yeah. with occasional yeah. with a with a company like Sony who played ball with Spider-Man but I don't think they got a they didn't buy it back though I think Sony's no. just Sony's like, still they're, like co-producers. They're, they're lending right <laughs> Spider-Man yeah, they're never to gonna them. give that up they're, they're not gonna give it up uh, part and parcel they're, it's like it's like we will work with you. We'll share. We'll do a profit sharing thing. Yeah. But you know we at th- at yeah. this point, even uh, though we've made so many bad Spider-Man movies by ourselves. Yeah. Well, that was the reason. They did. I love how before they uh, made the Marvel Spider-Man movie, Sony was like, "We're gonna try it one more time." <laughs> yeah, those were those were. If you've seen them, they're pretty stinky. And Universal does not want. Uh, Universal has the rights to Solo Hulk. So I mean, even though Marvel owns the character, yeah, you, they can't make a Hulk movie without Universal, yeah. and and apparently Universal uh, hates making money. So <laughs> they don't. The Hulk it. movies made money. The, hey, at this point, if they did one with Mark Ruffalo and they could <laughs> nah. use the Avengers, you know, they could have 
you know, I mean, look look at the, this latest Thor movie that's about to drop. I mean, I've I've heard great early press, and it looks like a Ruffalo Hemsworth uh, road trip movie or something. <laughs> like, like a buddy cop movie. Oh, I forget Wait, yeah, who's yeah, directing it. I remember so, um, Takia Watiti. Yeah, the way he they wa- he wanted to make the Thor movie, and they, he they asked him like, why should we make it? Dude, he's like. Let me make a film real quick using the character. So what he did was uh, he made a short film that he uploaded to YouTube of what Thor was doing during a uh, civil war. Oh, that, yeah. And he's yeah, some Australian funny. guy's roommate. <laughs> it's really funny. And apparently it's canon. You yeah, know, well, what was Thor doing? Says that that's what Thor was doing. He's <laughs> renting a room. With oh, I gotta see that. I he plays a prank yeah. on his roommate. He puts um, Morjorn on the um, the toilet. Oh shit! <laughs> and the roommate's just like, oh, I gotta shit so bad. <laughs> so, yeah, Thor and Hulk and Atari. Um, Atari. <laughs> th- so this box is gonna be a Linux-based r- ROM and EXE running machine. Have it's, they really told us much of what it's gonna do? Besides no, it's being a glorified flashback. They said it's going to have its own stuff on it. Yeah, how's it going to be different though? No, it's back? going to have an online uh, marketplace. It, it, you know, it's a flop. It's have <laughs> they told us why this is going to do better than the Ouya? I, I don't know, man. And I love you know every everybody <laughs> knows I love Ouya. I was like Captain Ouya for the first three seasons of this podcast, and I have no ill will towards it, but it's unfortunately not a successful. So somebody gonna get that? <laughs> no, it's let not know. a successful, uh, you know, business venture. Apparently, to you know, micro consoles with their own dedicated marketplace. The big problem is like you just, can't go up against Steam. exactly. You can't go up exactly. against Steam. No, yeah. There's so many big companies trying right now, and mm. even Steam hasn't proven to be incredibly successful as a plug-in TV uh, console. Oh, that's right. They tried that. I forgot. You know, they they were. Did they actually ever produce a Steam box? No, uh, I, I PC micro PC. Not that I know. Of, Just the controller. They made the controller. They made an OS system where Steam turns into basically like what a PS3 or Xbox One has. And I think eventually someone at marketing figured out that like it would be a lot more lucrative to just have the product. Like the the OS and the controllers available, and if anybody wants to make it, because you know the entire PC community just makes their own computers anyway, if they want to make that box, let them do it. Instead of us making it and trying it to sell to these people that already know they can make it for either, well, not cheaper at the time when it comes out, but in a couple of years cheaper. Because like when the Xbox One came out, making a computer that was on par with that was really expensive, possible but expensive. And now today. It's simple. Your average gaming PC that's like considered, um, what's it called, affordable, could be on par with an Xbox One or PS4. Well, it sounds like Steam tapped out before they even, you know, they, they were smart enough to have projected whatever the potential profit versus loss would be on something like that. Yeah. And we were like, it's not even Making your own hardware is very tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, very who does the Atari box appeal to? You've got, you've got people that are out there <laughs> buying the flashbacks. Mm-hmm. You know, the mm. annualized yeah. uh, impulse purchase. Yeah, what do they have, like 14, plug 15 plug. now, something like that? Uh, yeah. And, they, and they've revised it this year, and it looks very nice, uh, the HDMI yeah. edition. Um, it's going to have... Yeah, but the, the Activision still hasn't come out. I mm-hmm. don't know how you get it. That's a big thing. Like, just a selection of games. Well, that's the problem, is, is there's four or five different versions, all mm-hmm. with... Some have these slightly, slightly different, different games. games yeah. mm-hmm. or does it come with the paddles? Does it not come with the paddles? It's very confusing. And then yeah. they kind of, at games, kind of screwed themselves when they sent out defective units to the testers and the beta and the, and the, the reviewers even worse. And the reviewer, <laughs> the few reviewers who I guess who still do this. Didn't that pretty much the both the Genesis the, and yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Sega, right. the Sega, the Sega, the Genesis one, yes, that was yeah. disastrous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they've apparently Problem. fixed it. The, the late reviews on. Uh, I feel like that's not like it's it's only like a, a band aid though because everybody heard the bad press already. It yeah, just, but even the people that got like working ones, they said it's still like the compatibility still the same as it was before with the cartridge slot. The colors are still off. The audio is still off, and the control. Oh, the audio is nowhere near as bad as it was on the, yeah, the no, Fire it, Core. It did it a lot better. I've yeah, seen but, videos. It's it's it might be a little flat, but it's not. 
it's not as bad as it, it's not the pitch out of tune pitch that the the fire core genesis mm-hmm. units were like uh, those every game I, I i could tolerate it but every game sounded like it was like a octave or something well the one i'm comparing low. it to is the uh, past few generations that were the little um they're all they all use the same they all use the same exact yeah? emulation core it's called fire core uh-huh. and they may have made like minor changes to it but well, that's it, the problem. they've never overhauled it they didn't in 10 years they Lost didn't money. well that's the problem it. because it's like if you have like a custom ASIC or something like that, you're not going to want to revise that because prototyping and mm-hmm. production, you need testing. I mean, that's, that's expensive. Yeah. So they're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over. Sure. Because well, I keep gonna... selling because it's still mm-hmm. impulse buys. It's mm-hmm. still people yeah. that go to stores they don't know any better. I, they... They're missing some key games, I think. There really is no reason to be missing them. Why, did, why is there no Streets of Rage? That was a weird one for me because they had Streets of Rage at some point, didn't they? Uh, yes. Yeah, one of them has has the Streets of Rage games on it, and then yeah, it's like they swap in and out. They don't, they never keep and keep building. Well, like, I think what they, I feel like they do that because they still want to like just like play with people by saying like, no, you know, I, look up, look at this, look at this one has this, but then like look at that other one yeah, that has that. This is the only. I mean, this is this uh-huh. is their this is their only offering really. Yeah. And and from what I was told is that it's believe it or not, even though it's all Sega, there is. It still comes down to licensing, so they mm-hmm. may have looked at it. And Streets of Rage might have cost them two dollars a unit mm-hmm. versus. Uh, well, at um, the same time they dropped Streets of Rage, they picked up Mortal Kombat. Yeah, eh. Midway slipped a few in there. Right, right, right. Because that was real big that generation. I remember because. Um, yeah, and that was yeah, that was published by Acclaim, which isn't even around anymore. A probe. Well, Midway, yeah, it's probe, same, same yeah. company, but uh, real big on the box has Mortal Kombat. But no Streets of Rage. Yeah, it's very strange. I don't know. But anyway, so you've got that. So we ha- you have that marketplace. Like that's that has that has proven to be a surefire annual Christmas time. Yeah, because they only cost fifty or sixty bucks. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and they'll sell to any anyone. What's this thing going to cost? And then you've got the yeah. other side. So you've got the Atari historical Atari and enth- us. You've got us, <laughs> the people who grew up with Ataris that collect Atari stuff that have multiple real Atari hardware. Some of them may be modified for better output. Some of them may be, you know, valuable. I mean, like, are you marketing to us? Because I don't think we want that. I don't. We don't want a, a OUYA-type thing that's made by Atari that's going to play the Atari games. We've, we've already got Harmony cartridges. We've already got massive collections of physical... Carts. Atari doesn't. It's not that hard to make Atari look decent on a on an HD TV. It's not, you know, impossible. It's not as hard as, as like a Super Nintendo or a Genesis, the only which thing. needs a SCART to an HDMI to or a or the, you know. I think I think most people. Into it. The thing, yep. I think I think you're just like you're talking about two kind of separate people. One person is the type of person who really just wants to play their favorite games they remember. You know, so in terms of like. Nintendo will say it's like really yeah. Mario three, you know, yeah. maybe like Teen Mutant Ninja Turtles two. There's or a price like that. on that though, and that's yeah. the main thing here because, like Greg was saying, flashbacks yeah. are like fifty, sixty bucks. Yeah. This, this I is think three hundred. Yeah, versus, exactly. <laughs> three hundred dollars versus like, versus like the other versus that. like the other person, yeah. which is like the enthusiast. But the thing is, the enthusiast has a lot of options that already exist. Yeah. Whether it's F- have, FPGA well, and stuff like that. And that kind of emulator. The person I see this appealing to is I know there are people that are excited that there's going to be a new Atari home console and it's just there's really no reason for there to be. They're like, oh, I want Atari to get back in the console and it's like, oh, that, That's ridiculous. Or like, they're like those no. people those are want Sega coming back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, they, they, these these delusional people. They like, just why? Want, yeah. what, would, what would it benefit? Yeah, they, 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 are they going to make good games again because they have to pay less for like, licensing now because it's on their own console? It doesn't work that way. Well, there, it's funny. So many of the Facebook posts on like the Atari Age Facebook group, <laughs> it's like a redo of the uh, the, uh, chameleon? the stupid chameleon. Yeah. Oh, my God. They were, <laughs> we can't, were we like, can't get away from the chameleon. People were like, well, I don't want the chameleon. I just want, I just want them to produce the shells. The <laughs> <for my> <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Are you taking the innards and periodically changing the shell on your jacket? Uh, what are you doing? 
And then they're like, I just want the shell. They're all like, I want the shell. I want the shell. You got a phone shui or Jaguar. And we're going to actually do it. They just want it to collect uh, it. But it's not, it has has no historical significance. Yeah. And this thing has. I'm not even, I mean. I, it looks like a, all the, honestly, when I looked at that, that, that uh, rendering, it looks like a Pizza Hut. <laughs> a Pizza yeah, Hut building like in Atari colors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's what it looks like. They're like that weird you're gonna get a shape. Dreamcast shaped like a Howard like a Johnson. Yeah, yeah. yeah that weird yeah. shape. The power, what is it? The I don't know what it's called. Pagoda. Like, yeah, it's like a pagoda type. Not group. parallelogram. Rhombus. Not rhombus. Or, no, not rhombus. Yeah. Not rhombus. I don't remember the game. Rhombus. Yeah. It's so. Who the question is? Who is this for? It's not for us. It's certainly. I don't believe it's for. The high-end Atari collector. I don't think it's for that yearly. I mean, someone who wants to plunk down forty bucks for a flashback, mm-hmm. I think they're going to have a hard time even like with the HDMI pricing. Uh, that's like sixty or seventy or eighty dollars for the mm-hmm. HDMI version. They're probably still going. At Games is smart. They're still making a composite out version. Although at that at that point, even that's going to have to change because TVs don't accept that shit exactly. anymore. That's the only reason. That's, that, that's yeah. the only reason they have HDMI yeah. outs now on things because it's, you have to. It's, I, I know so many people are like, "Oh, Hyperkin is so smart. They're finally making an HDMI NES thing because they have their retro HD now." And I'm like, "No, they have to because like uh, 4K TVs don't." use composite and they can't register anything below 40p so you have to have something that does HDMI and outputs a higher signal mm-hmm. or else you you're forcing these people to buy an adapter and they won't that's a larger investment it's too complicated for them it's one more thing to plug into right. the TV and they're like no I'm, not, I'm returning it you know when you think about these the, where the new TVs are going it makes you wonder why no one has in the retro uh, community why no one has bothered to do what the Framemeister people did. And the, the Framemeister is old now. I mean, how mm-hmm. is that? Oh, it's discontinued. They're, they don't even make them anymore, right? No, ma- no make them? They're gone. They're done. Oh. There's no new Framemeisters being produced, mm-hmm. so people are... They were know, just done for, like, the arcade enthusiasts and stuff like that, right? When the people who have them... Good for them. It's you know it was always expensive. It never came down. Yeah. No, so you're you're more. talking about making a like a budget priced version of that, like something well, for not the even masses. Budget price, maybe for like a couple hundred, hundred, hundred bucks or RGB something for converters. you know for uh, for you know classic gamers that they want to. I mean, not everybody. Yes, I guess you could you could you could play stuff on CRT. I mean, I do, mm-hmm. but I mean at some point, uh, you know, TVs break the the. LCD and the plasmas don't last as long as the CRTs ever did. So when your TV breaks, or whatever for whatever the reason, and now you go to, you go to the Best Buy, you buy a new one, and it it doesn't take 240p at, at all. What, mm-hmm. what do you do? Well, you ha- I see a lot of uh, the distributors that um, sell the like reproduction NES controllers and all that. They're starting to get into the adapter market, not making good ones, but cheap ones, ones that like a store like this can buy for a smaller price and then we can sell it for like 20 30 bucks they slap their brand on it but it's the same one you buy from china that does composite the hdmi and it yeah. upscales it but doesn't actually make it look better it just makes it work and that's the main thing is the main audience isn't us mm-hmm. it's them yeah. the, right. the like, pe- we're not gonna, like they're not going to care about like scan lines things like that they just want to get a exactly damn thing. the guy that comes in here he hasn't touched an nes game in 30 years and all of a sudden he wants to play super mario brothers 3 he buys an nes and i ask him do you have a 4k tv he says yes and i'm like well you're going to need this adapter it's 30 dollars i mean they don't even care whether it's like stretched widescreen things like yeah. that yeah they just, they they just, just want it to it. work they just want to see an image well anyway so atari box i don't know yeah i yeah. mean we have yet to even see anything materialize because, surprise, surprise, it's going to be a crowdfunded venture. Uh, I'm getting on top so of everything of else. I'm getting so sick of it. On yeah. top of everything else. I mean... No one can afford to make their own shit anymore. Well, because look, I mean, it's... I think, we, I think we've had this discussion before where I was talking about, like, crowdfunding and, like, Kickstarter. It's about... It should be about, like, literally kickstarting. As in, like, look... Yeah. We want to we wanna get our foot in the door. Not like it, it's not really designed for you fund everything for yeah. us up front and we keep the profits. 
push. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's like what happens to good old fashioned capital investment? <laughs> just get a couple good, rich billionaires. Go to a bank. How did things ever get done? You went to a bank. Yeah, yeah but then yeah, I have to pay interest. Really, they don't probably exist anymore. <laughs> Uh, I'd much rather just ask a, a bunch of strangers a for a couple hundred home. dollars and I'll promise them a post. Well, that's the thing. The reason why people like to do that is because they don't have to take the risk then. It's not on them. to Because if you go to the bank, you get a loan. They're going to want their money back. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, like, you know, With interest. You, yeah. Whereas if you go, you know, to, give, give me give me $20 here, $20 there, you know, yeah. add it up to like a mil- We want a million dollars to make a game or to make something. Yeah, ask 100. Whether it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not, not, not on you. So... Segwaying from uh, a console that has literally doesn't have a prototype at this point, it's it's vape as vapor as vaporware comes, to one that does have a working prototype, and a lot of people have uh, had the pleasure. Yeah, sorry, let me just interject. That, that that's the distinction. Yeah, it's like if it was like, listen, we need this to to for the prototyping stage, just so we can then bring it to private investors and, and bring it to a bank, just yeah. to, just to show that we're we've got something. Yeah, that would be different. It's like, listen, we need you know. I don't know, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, even if it's like seventy thousand or something like that. Well, why don't just, to, just, just to put it together. Three orders. Yeah. You just take. All right, uh, we, you know, we we need three thousand pre-orders, or we don't think we can make this. All right, well, wait yeah. till three thousand pre-orders and yeah. then try and make it. Mm-hmm. But whatever. It's mm-hmm. you know, it's well. Yeah, I mean, sorry. I just, like, I, just no, to clarify, I just want to clarify no, that, that distinction. No apologies necessary. Mm-hmm. It's it's Kickstarter it is essentially pre-ordering. You mm-hmm. know, in in. In a roundabout way, in a way that's that's safe for consumers, uh, if the project doesn't meet its goal, you, you know, you know, not, nothing lost there for people who are potential investors because Kickstarter won't take the money unless the goal is met, and mm-hmm. and then at that point, I know, someone problem. can take the money and run. I think I have a real problem with the term like backer and investor in those co- in the, that context because th- that that implies that. Profit sharing. That sure. implies you have, yeah. like, yeah, that, which there, there really should be under these circumstances. But uh, in this case, it's you hopeless dreamer. Let's yeah. just call them hopeless yeah. dreamers, not backers or investors. They got put in the credits. Hopeless dreamers. Yeah, exactly. That I don't know. Just, long it, part of the credits. <laughs> oh yeah, what uh, what game came out recently? It was Mighty Number no. Nine did that, didn't they? Like three oh. hour, they had like a three hour long credit sequence. Yeah, I mean, the, any any game that promises. Uh, your name in in the credits or in a, a thank you section it, at a very low level of entry. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of that. You're going to get a lot of that. A long credit What's roll. What's even the appeal to that? Being in the credits of a game when it's you and a million <laughs> other you're people. You're just looking like a phone book. Hey, my, yeah. I'm I've had my name in a couple things, and I'm I'm always happy to point it out to my wife. <laughs> yeah. like, look, look, I'm in this book. <laughs> <laughs> it says I that we took your money. <laughs> thank you. Here's your name. Thanks. Um, uh, uh, this hey. being note, like, what part of the book your need your your money like, <laughs> yeah. like page five, lower left corner. Yeah, you yeah. get one part that's like highlighted. It's like there you go. <laughs> that's your that's, that's your, your twenty dollars. <laughs> this yeah, these words would wouldn't be possible without the donation. <laughs> the footnotes like, like this, sentence, this sentence made possible. It'll by make Frankie the books Vitarello. twenty times thicker because there's an asterisk <laughs> after every sentence. Oh, uh, if I yeah, if I could get like. Um, Alan Cumming, like in the beginning of PBS uh, Mystery Theater, to 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 say, uh, th- this video game wouldn't be possible without a grant from Frankie Vitarello. <laughs> that would I'd be my dream. Alan Cumming, if you're listening, we'll we'll talk. <laughs> so there is a system though that has been making the rounds at conventions at, and. Uh, YouTube oh, oh, reviews. Is it the C64 Mini? No. No? <laughs> I can't... Uh, speaking of that, briefly, I'll, we'll get back to the, this next console. I can't believe the C64 <laughs> Mini is like a locked down, you know, you only get X amount of games on it. It's not It's not a full operating Commodore 64 that you Who can... Who says it's not? The... the People. The, the, comp- the, hey, the people behind it. Yeah. They're saying it's going to have predetermined games on it that they can get the licenses for and that's it that it's not going to have an SD card slot it's not going to have the ability to add games or run disc images Euros I I do I would if if the C64 Mini could run disc images and if it turns out that it's easily hackable and you can add disc or tape images I'll, I'll pick one up in a heartbeat, if it has good compatibility. Well, that was another. That's another one. A project where they have a website and all that, and everybody's like, they're all. Everybody's like, oh, they're talking about it, but they have nothing. They have no release date. They have nothing in in the future. Nothing 
listed that this thing is actually going to be made. There's nothing. Yeah. And this is the same company who promised to do something a couple of years ago and never did it. Hmm. So for all the hoopla, I don't uh, believe it when I see it. Yeah, that's another one. Now, <laughs> see if we can get like see if we can get the words out. Uh, the console is called the CD S E E D I. And it that is. Sounds like a porno. It does. <laughs> it's not a great name. Uh, in the same way that TNA wasn't a great name for a wrestling <laughs> organization, you know, it's like tits and ass. But <laughs> the CD is like, is this a dive bar? Is it? it is, a, is it a CD uh, a dance club? Is it? Is it a CD part of town? Maybe that's the gag. Maybe they think it's funny. Maybe the people behind it think it's a great name. Um, what that um, the one the retro. Blocks turned yeah. into something else that it was an awful, awful name. No, it's, that is no. It was oh, it was the poly poly, poly mega. Now it's poly mega. Poly mega. That's so what is, that. is, is it, it for based? Is it for people who have can can have open relationships with multiple yeah, many mega. wives and and husbands? Like is it is it uh, is I it a, a console that inspires polyamory? I don't I don't know, but it just doesn't sound great to me. It doesn't sound as good as retro blocks at least. You know, blocks, video games, classic games are blocky. The console has like parts was, that are blocky. Yeah, that's modular, that so it makes modular. sense. These are the retro blocks of the retro block. Now, I think this CD system, which is has its own, um, I believe, a pri- proprietary OS. I don't know if it's based in Linux or Android or what, but it it's going to be able to play all the CD generation of consoles, Sega CD. Uh, 3DO, Turbo CD, uh, Jaguar P- CD, Jaguar CD, PC Engine CD. As long as they, ca- as long as emulation cores exist for those, they've adapted them. So it, this is an interesting thing, and I have I have seen physical uh, manufactured prototypes of it. Uh, they they are literally in the hands of other YouTubers out there. You can you can look it up now. You can stop listening to this. Turn it's us also off and, uh, a, and go away and <laughs> go watch those. Or you can watch them later. Actually, it also... Well, it's not Blu-ray, but it can run DVDs oh. and CDs and can also burn them. Oh, oh right. Yeah. They used to... Yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably cheaper at this point to get an all-in-one drive like the DVR, than it is. To, yeah. I can't remember the last probably time. impossible what would you not burn to... On, like, what would you burn on it? Like, you mean, like, duplicate a game? Yeah, maybe duplicate... <laughs> yeah, it's probably got on, enough onboard yeah, memory that, that makes, it can hold X amount of... You know, it's probably can hold tons. It's probably got expandable memory. I'm sure you could put an SD card in it. It's probably something they're not going to advertise, but it can do because that gets into shady territory. Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, I've, it, and it is an emulator. So, yeah, that's so. shady too. Like, so I mean, <laughs> don't want to make it any darker. And it looks very plug and play. Once you know you get it set up, I don't I don't know what kind of hoops you have to jump through to load BIOS files in. I'm sure you have to do. Some small. I would think it wouldn't even use a BIOS. How would it deal with the, uh, you know, the? the I think all CD emulation usually uses only because no, only because they they. So when they did the when they create emulators for CD based systems, they kind of shortcutted them. They did like a shortcut, so Mm -hmm. they created it, but they're using the BIOS from the system. Right. Well, because it's proprietary. Well, well, it was, but once once you if you. If someone is able to basically dump the uh, the core from a BIOS mm. from a CD based system, then you can just if, if you oh like reverse, reverse engineer yeah, 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 yeah reverse yeah, engineer yeah. it. I don't know if that's what they're doing. Well, but it, it says it, so. it says it plays PlayStation One, Turbo Graphics, Neo Geo CDs, mm. Sega CD, and then also uh, ROMs for NES, Genesis, Mame. Yeah. Game Boy, Original Color, Game Boy Advance, so Atari 2600, and TurboGrafx-16, and apparently they are sold separately some retro adapter, so you could play cartridges from the Genesis, the game... So it's not really playing the games, dumping them is basically... Like, it would be dumping yeah, the cartridges. It, it wouldn't like be playing that stuff directly. Yeah, the, the CDs, fine. it would be playing directly? It's, or, it's, what's or would it be uh, playing, like, an ISO? Also, it know. probably immediately creates an image of the disc. What's a what's a, a what's short. an NAS? Uh, Are you talking about a console? Well, it says multimedia plays DVDs, CDs, uh, and media from an NAS. Nano ass serpents. I don't know if you, you, if you know it. Rapper? Leave it in the comments section. <laughs> network, yeah. a dr- network, something. I don't know. 
Ah, Network so I've seen it running, and it looks. This thing looks like it's at least what it claims to be, and it exists. It's it's physically exists. This company, whoever's behind it, uh, they were smart enough to engineer fully working prototype the way it's before, supposed to be. Right, before yeah, the it's supposed to be. they asked people to invest mm-hmm. in it. So I believe this is also going to be a crowdfunded venture when it kicks off. But at least, you know, there are people that have had their hands on it and you can see video of that and you can make your own decision. It's There's no, there's no Super Nintendo with duct tape around it mm-hmm. inside of a plastic shell. So it has, it has Wi-Fi, so it probably means like if you have a network storage... Mm-hmm. Like a like oh, a that must hard be drive, and you can yeah. just run it off of that. Thirty-two gig storage included uh, SD card, uh, region free. Plays DOS games with DOS box. Oh, that's good. That's uh, cool. For three eighty six via CD and DOS box, smartphone keyboard input. It's Bluetooth. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably a USB that's keyboard also. A uh, USB uh, keyboard and mouse, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. CD uh, via Scum VM, which is a Scum emulator. And optimized ports of classic games, Doom, Quake, etc. Interesting. Yeah, and it. I, I think. What does it have a projected price point? It does back. You can, you can back up your disc. Uh, let's see here. I feel like that's kind of like almost too much. Like it's a, I don't know. If, what, well, what I mean is like it's, it's not. It's anything like, you're doing a PC. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel like it would maybe. They should have focused more on the CD thing because that's actually like new. Okay, like, so this, like yeah. scum and stuff like well, that. That's sort of like is... removed from the core. Yeah, we're we're talking about like twenty-five-year-old games. Yeah, yeah I know. It's not that so, complicated. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, so the answer, like, Frank, Frankie. It. Frankie is right. Most of CD-based systems require you to copy a BIOS file. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> to the system, which can be done through Wi-Fi. I'm sure it's not. Uh, one exception I mean, you can find BIOS files. PlayStation. Well, no, yeah, it's easy. Really? Yeah, you don't need the BIOS for PlayStation, but we recommend adding one for better compatibility. So they have engineered their own PlayStation Core. It just don't work yeah. that well. But you know, you can you can easily find a PlayStation BIOS out there. We're yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, I guess that's how they're getting around the legal issue with it. You know what I mean? I had a harder time in my day finding an Intellivision. Bios yeah, Bios that's tough, than I man. did that finding tough. PlayStation Bios. Oh, the late great Keith Robinson. He yep, he protected his <laughs> property, and so, he deservedly so. Wait, now it says uh, the systems that it does not support. Interesting that they they actually go up and yeah. say this. PS2, Xbox, GameCube, Sega Dreamcast, uh, PSP, yeah. UMDs. But again, that's. Almost yeah. except for PS2, all of those systems use proprietary right. discs of some fashion. That yeah. And if there's a right. way to add uh, emulators to the system, I'm sure people, even though they don't support those things, I'm sure people so can code. Now, time on now here would probably be the disc drive. Here's, here's the thing. The drive so, itself probably can't read that stuff. Various technical yeah. and cost limitations prevent us from supporting these systems. Perhaps a version 2. <laughs> Get ready for another yeah. Kickstarter. Uh, not supported this time, potentially in the future. SNES, odd one. Sega Saturn, 3DO, CDI, PCFX, who cares? Amiga no CD32, Amiga CD32, mm. Jaguar CD. That's interesting. Now, this is, this, Mike is just going to pass out. FM Tom's Marty. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, Joe. I, Joe's not here. Yeah. And, uh, and our friend Leon, who just would never be able to accept this. The Pippin! The <laughs> Pippin doesn't work. I think the PCFX is the. The worst. That's omission. a weird uh, list, that's, though. That's like, you know, that where, are you, where are you gonna get your fill of like anti, anti games? <laughs> these are basically the most <laughs> difficult. These are the most. I mean, there's the more complicated uh, uh, systems to emulate. Yeah, but still, except Super for SNES, Nintendo, that's, that's what I'm confused about. Mm-hmm. What's that? Super Nintendo. That's the one that I was confused about. Uh, my guess is maybe because of all the special chips and all that they had some oh, issues with that. Maybe. But I don't. Why not just? I mean. Yeah, I don't know what they're running. I'm just running yeah. an emulator. Typically, Super Nintendo. I mean, it's it's well it's well emulated if you have a powerful enough system. But it's one of those ones that can choke if uh, you know the CPU speed isn't there or the, the your processor speed isn't. Probably there. better to not have it at all than have shitty. Yeah, they've probably te- they probably tested it and they they don't they're not happy with the overall compatibility. But again, give it some time, and I'm sure. If it's an open source type system where people can make uh, their own things for it, I'm sure that uh, someone will figure, someone it, will figure out. it out. If if that's the case, and even if not, 
people are going to be buying this for the CD-based stuff, not for yeah the, to be able to play NES and Super NES. Yeah, the um, main drive to this is what a lot of people have been asking for, a, a Retron that plays the CD stuff. Exactly. And I think the comp- the retro blocks slash polyamory uh, machine <laughs> are... They, they drop the ball in not making the waves as fast as this thing did. Like, yeah. this, I, I saw it quickly and... and once they did their press release out on the internet, there were already a ton of YouTubers that had the models that were... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's one that they're passing around or if they, they engineered a bunch of them and got them out in the hands of the people. That's the way to do it. And you get your stuff out there. Let people put their eyes on it. Cause this that's, at face value, too, is a lot more appealing because uh, you get this and that's it. You, you got it. You know what I mean? The retro blocks, though, you buy it and then it's like, okay, I want to play PlayStation. I have to buy the thing that plugs into it. Yeah, that's... I want to play Sega CD. It's got it. I don't get that. Yeah. I, I think one... It was, again, it, that was a case. I think that in their case, they wanted something... They sort of went down the road that... Actually, they went down the same road that... Uh, the retro VGS chameleon went down. They the same exact road where they looked at it and rather than thinking about like as, as Leo said many times, a lot of people, whether they're casual gamers or, or even you know experienced gamers, they want something that they can easily set up mm-hmm. and just play mm-hmm. yep. and and know that it works. Whereas these guys have looked at it as as being collectors and like Uber fans first, they've said, "Well, what's my my yeah. wet dream yeah, it's like, of well, a concept?" Well, and twenty they, of those people, <laughs> but then they, they can never realize it in in at the end of the day. And that, so you're right; they should have just released something. But the problem is their entire the Polymega, the entire platform, was based on this capability that you could run the original cartridges. Even though that required 15 different adapters. But the base yeah. unit had the CD player in it. Yes. So the CD portion of the emulation was integral to the, <laughs> mm-hmm. the entire thing. But they were selling it as like, you know, oh, you can buy an NES uh, adapter and a Super NES adapter and a yeah. Genesis adapter and a blah, 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 and a blah, blah, blah. And I get like, okay, pick your poison. Your, if your favorite thing in the world is Genesis and you have a massive Genesis physical library... Uh, you get the bonus of having the CD part built in, and you could play your Sega CD and your PlayStation 1 and whatever else it's capable of playing. But, like, then, you know, are the, is the company going to overproduce uh, the, the, the NES thing? Are people yeah. not going to buy that adapter? Are they going to produce them on demand? Like, yes. uh, every quarter they're going to, you know, have, like, okay, we're going to ship these out. If, you, if you're interested in an NES adapter... You buy it now because we're gonna we're gonna this is gonna go into production and then you know we we have to have the exact numbers you know is that the way it's gonna be or or what it just I don't know it doesn't that doesn't sound but then well we even got out. the initial one the initial one was just the CD the CD the CD base and the uh, adapter as as one unit that played Genesis games have they aborted they're in there they didn't, oh they're, they still didn't, going. they're still going to go right? <laughs> <laughs> they're, de- they're definitely still going but it's like like you're saying why not just if this, they kept saying, "Oh, well, this piece of it is done. It plays all these CD systems. Release it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just do what that. are you doing? And then coming soon, adapters, adapters, and then just never do those. <laughs> <laughs> and and then you know the prototypes of those adapters will, will be the things that's worth you know, a million dollars. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's a crazy time we're living in. It's just if you could, if we, if I could go back in time ten years. And say we would have uh, Nintendo producing plug and plays yeah. that are that are wildly successful, and you know companies like Atari trying to get back into the game with with uh, Linux based <laughs> co- microcomputers. I'd be like, "You're fucking crazy! Yeah, whole it's never going to happen." Its yeah, I, it's, it, I would react to that the same exact way I react to these people, these conspiracy tinfoil hat people 
every year that come up with a new thing that Sega's getting back in the console. <laughs> the Dreamcast too. Oh yeah. my God! What was it? Was it? Was it this thing? This there was something that, that they were that they were saying it was good. That it was a new Sega thing. It was well, there was not some, the tro- no, no, no. It, There was some rumor no. about it. It was it, it was, was a else. petition. Yeah, it yeah. was a petition oh, for Sega to make yeah. a Dreamcast two. That's yeah, there, all. Yeah, it there was. was something. There was something people were talking about. Well, I think there was even people trying to start Kickstarters for it. But I was like, but Sega's not on board. though. that's what it was. That's yeah. what it was. It was a, it was a Kickstarter. Yeah, they did a Kickstarter for the, the Sega. Yeah, Dreamcast but it had nothing to do too. with Sega. That's yeah, and it it's was. like, oh, we we want to start a Kickstarter so Sega can do a Dreamcast too. And it's like, but that's <laughs> yeah. not how it works. And all, and all the, You're just yeah, gonna go and to and Sega's door and like, here's a yeah. million dollars. Please make the Dreamcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. And of course, all the, news, all the news <laughs> articles would just put Dreamcast two. Yeah, Dreamcast two coming. It's a like, little nuts. Without the clarity. I just want to say that this is hysterical. I I wanted to get a quick, you know. Wrap my brain around what the petition was. I typed in Sega petition. There are fucking hundreds <laughs> of Sega <laughs> petitions. One well, change guy. Yeah. 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 Petition for Sega to cancel Sonic Forces. <laughs> <laughs> A little late for that. For Sega to remove the DRM off Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces. Yeah. Uh, petition for Sega to release Sonic 3 Remastered. Shh. Petition for Sega to resurrect House of the... People! You cannot petition video game companies! It doesn't work that way! But I want my OC in Sonic Mania. They don't care. Oh, so by the way, you're, you're asking about the price. <laughs> they had an early bird price. Obviously, probably... Have you ever done that, by the way? We're talking what? about CD? Type your name in. Oh, in I Google. did. Yeah. Well, type your name and then put The Hedgehog after it. Yeah, they're the all... The results are hilarious. You know, the hedgehogs are all yellow. They're all different <laughs> characters, but they're all yellow. I don't know why. They're all awful. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a, something about that fandom. There was yep. an early bird CD for $99 plus That's shipping. That's a great price point. Uh, for this 100 is kinda, bucks, yeah. Well, this is weird. They, they offered $100 for a beta... It's kind of weird. Hmm. I don't know why you want the beta system. And I think now it might be 125. They have a two player, which means two joyst, uh, two controllers for 140. Uh, I don't know. Those prices aren't that bad, though, because the biggest argument they're going to have against this is the people that have the retro pie. They're like, why don't you just make that? But making a good retro pie after you have all the stuff is going to cost you 60 to $100 buying controllers. So that's about the same price. So <laughs> it's not going to stop. The retro pie people. No, I know it's not going to stop them. It's why don't you just make a ret? You know, like but it's know, we've a hard. Oh, by the way, this, oh, this is closed. Did you know that? Oh, it finished. Did were they? Well, it was Indiegogo. I mean, just, I don't know if that the finish is. They had sixty three. Their fixed goal was fifty grand. They raised thirty one thousand something. Oh, it ended unsuccessfully. So it says clo- I don't know. It says hmm. closed. Interesting. Or whatever that meant. Well, they so now you're talking about themselves. this, and it's, it's vaporware. Oh no! Back to the polymega. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Well, we'll do some research on what CD is. <laughs> well, we wasted this episode. Ah, <laughs> ah dear. See you in five months. Maybe it'll be back. Hmm, interesting. It closed. Yeah, that is interesting. Oh, so it uh, so closed means failed. No, well, they may have. They could have. Closed. Well, maybe they had. They may be going to a different uh, investment uh, platform. Oh, it was ended prematurely. You're saying? Yeah, closed oh, is okay. not. Is right. not ended. Closed yeah. is closed. Okay. Like they closed it. Yeah. So, well, somebody probably came up to him and said, "I got a million dollars. I'll give it to you if you do it." And they're like, "Okay." Oh, speaking of um, successful Indiegogo projects, uh, did anybody here get their? Uh, Link to the f- completed Dragon's Lair, the movie uh, teaser, kind of their pitch. Uh, Probably, trailer. I don't think I watched it, but check it out. It's interesting. It's it's mostly animatic, which me it for those yeah. of you not in the know, it's like uh, stills um, in in segments. It's like just uh, illustrations of what those sequences are going to be. But it's fully it's like voiced, storyboarded. It's like storyboarding. storyboarded. But there are sequences that are fully animated in a very Don Bluth style okay. that look excellent. Uh, very smooth, very very interesting. It, it's a prequel to the story of Dirk and Daphne, like a young Daphne and a young Dirk. Uh, so, yeah, they it, uh, we we previously discussed that venture, and it was not only was it successful, but it has moved into a, a stage now where there's some type of fruition. You can see completed work and now Bluth and Goldman are going to shop that around to studios and hopefully one of them picks it up or maybe even a you know an indie studio can pick it up. I think I think the smartest thing for them to do with something like 
a Dragon's Lair the movie would be to bundle it with software, you know, like make it, you know, at a price point where they they can profit off of selling the movie on Blu-ray with the Blu-ray version of the game remastered, the original Dragon's Lair, or something like that. I think that's that makes as a lot long of as sense. we end up at one point getting Space Ace starring Matt Damon. That's what, that's what <laughs> yeah, that's what Matt Damon is Space Ace. <laughs> uh, Matt Damon, uh, uh. a little hot water. So uh, interesting. Interesting times that we're in right now with with all these things coming out. It's it's just craziness. Did you, what else uh, has been happening in in the world of games? Anything you guys want to discuss? Have you uh, played Star Fox Two? No, my SNES Classic remains in its box. I am going to get around to hacking it uh, and adding stuff to it. But unlike the NES Classic, where two hundred and fifty megabytes of onboard flash storage can fit the entire library, that's nowhere oh, near enough yeah. space mm. for Super Nintendo's complete library. So, so you got a nitpick. I gotta curate myself a list of the games that I want. I thought it was like five something. <laughs> it is, but half of it is used for the OS. Yeah. yeah. The Super NES yeah. emulation apparently is much beefier. You're gonna dis- have to decide between having Tin Stars and Blues Brothers. <laughs> hey <we're>... man. <laughs> <laughs> I just brought it up because I think I'm probably one of the like on like the rarity, but I think that I can see why they canceled it. What do you mean? The... Star Fox Two. Oh yeah, oh, yeah no, yeah. no, I, mean, I think a lot of people have. Like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm probably one of the exceptions. Like, yeah, yeah. I think this game's not really that good. I know so many people are like, oh, why didn't uh, they make it? It's Star like, well, Fox you just won. want something it's else okay, to play. Star Fox it's, One it's, wasn't yeah. exactly uh, <laughs> no. Light your pants on fire. The lines were in the sand. St- the 64 was coming out. This thing was taking game. too long to come out, and a lot of people too. They played it, and they're like, it's really short. That's not even what bothers me. It's just it's, it's, it's something like weird about it. Just like it, it feels like a bunch of like it's like it, it's like it's, I, I, it's like your time managing. Yeah. So it's like do this thing for thirty seconds. Now do this thing for another thirty seconds and make sure this thing doesn't get hit by missiles. Mm-hmm. I was a uh, couple of navs ago when the Super Nintendo Classic like, came just out. Fly and shoot. We, we just, set one up go. and uh, someone was playing it. And as I'm watching them play it, I'm thinking I was like, this really. Unfortunately, seems like a cash grab sequel. You know what I mean? Let's pump something out real quick to make some quick money on a popular IP before it's over. Well, I have played Star Fox Zero, and that's a shitty game too. Yeah. Is it? Because really? that looks like yeah. that looks like sixty four. Uh, it's right? unfortunate. It's so but it's hard to play. Physically hard to play. And yeah, it's what? worthless right now. We've yeah. had. It's like you can get Star Fox Two for twenty bucks, and there's no other like. First party IP on the Wii U. Oh, Zero. You mean yeah. Star Fox Zero? Yeah. yeah. N- none of the first party Nintendo IPs that haven't had a sequel, like Splatoon, obviously is worthless because Splatoon Two's out, and, it, but, and it's made by Platinum, which but, kills me because there's such a so great. What did they do with the controls that messed it up? It's well, it's a combination of um, the motion sensors on the controller on the the Wii pad. You can't use. You also can't use the classic Wii uh. controller. You have to use the full size uh, gamepad, game yeah. and the the cockpit view is like you're on the Wii pad, and you have to hold it up in front of you. But then there's stuff you, you know, third person view with the ship is on your TV screen, and it sounds like a lot of things that were conceptualized and sounded like a good idea, and they went all the way through to execution, and it just it's not a great game and it does the things don't mechanically work really well so and it's not fun to play so basically made a Star Fox game then ruined it <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> but know. but historically I like does, the idea I, I mean Star I like does Star Fox, Star Fox have like a Star lot Fox of great sequels. sequels I don't think so I think the first one and the N64 one mm-hmm. people love and yeah. then the rest of them are all over the well, place. Well, because the rest of them, they, they, they introduce a whole bunch of different mechanics. People people just want to fly forward and shoot <laughs> things. That's, 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 well, that's just not how Nintendo wants to do yeah. things. They Nintendo... want to fly in a triangle and shoot other triangles. Yes. Yeah, right? but Nintendo always wants to innovate and start something new. So mm-hmm. even if the people want what they already had, Nintendo's like, no, that's not what you want. Let me tell you what you want. Yeah, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I will get around to playing Star Fox 2. From what I've seen, it seems fine to me. If you like the first one... I actually want to... I got, I got 100% on it. Cause, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> in like, in how, many, how much time did that take? Like 30 minutes? Not, well, well, it takes you 30 minutes to beat the game. Yeah, I heard but, it's but, but, but in order to like, actually like, get accumulate... Because all... there's three different difficulties. Mm-hmm. And, try, and in order to like, get... You have to get like, a certain amount of points to get like um, certain ranks, things like that. 
But in order to unlock like this, there's in order to, you have to unlock this like uh, special area, kind of like it's Mario World, where you get all the power ups mm-hmm. to make it easier to play. Doing all that stuff, I mean, I, I put the, I put it in, time into it, um, maybe like a week's worth of time, mm. just to say like you know, because it's like, kind of like getting a brand new Super Nintendo game, sure, so yeah. it was worth it, but. Nevertheless, I walked away from the game feeling like it was like, eh. Empty. <laughs> Look, I played you much, like, I played oh much worse, but I played much worse. I'm thinking like for a late gen SNES game, like I can see why they're like, eh. I have let's to, show this thing. But I have to say, I'm, I'm re- like, as Mike is saying, you know, a lot of other people that I know, when the SNES Classic, when they got their hands on it uh, last month and they played, they, you know, they all tried out Star Fox 2, they were like, ooh, I'm trying Star Fox 2. And I'm thinking to myself, the ROM has been out for... Yeah, I didn't bother with that. It's like years. Yeah. Nobody ever tried it? Yeah, Yeah, the ROM is... I did. I never did. It's, it's, yeah, it's been out there for a long time. People have made, made physical cartridges. Ooh. Apparently it's different, though. It is. Yeah. It doesn't... Is, uh, it is has that a, different? It has a lock-on feature that's, that you can't turn off, where when you're in the dogfight mode, and you're in cockpit mode, and you're, you're dogfighting with wolf... Mm-hmm. Wolf team? Wolf squad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Star Wolf. Star Wolf. Yeah. Oh, Furries. When you're fighting the other birds, uh, your your reticule will lock onto them, and it's very easy to do- duck and dodge and get away from them and shoot them at the same, the same time. In the in the one on the Super NES Classic, Nintendo turned that off. It's not there's no auto lock on, and you can't turn it on. So that's the most dramatic difference in the game. There's an item in the uh, oh. Game. That's what they can get. That special area that's a special area. Nah, that's, nah, nah, nah. that's what the item is. Okay, so but it's something you get after completing. Yeah. A, that's the know, thing you have to actually earn it. And, and, it, and it does make the game a lot easier. Yeah, and it's, it's whereas without it, it actually makes the game annoying to play. That's the problem because it's not like it's not like you're just making it harder or, or easier. It's it's where you're making it easier or just like really really annoying. So without it, it, without it, without that lock on, it's like. It's, it's like someone throws you out of an airplane with a pistol and says, shoot the target. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you, it's like, you, you don't know which way it's up. Yeah. And they changed the loadout on some of the characters, uh, Star Wings, or whatever they're called. Star Wings? Star Wings. Okay. I, I'm not a Star Fox. <laughs> I, I know enough. Um, and uh, you can do barrel rolls. Oh, boy. And everything. So... It's, you know, it looks, the Super NES classic version from everything I understand about it is complete. It's, it's mm-hmm. Nintendo, either they had the finished version and that's not the ROM that leaked like 10 years ago, or however long it's been, or they went in and they finished it. Either, mm-hmm. either or, we will never know. Uh, so, never know this it's different, it's different enough, but it's still the same, it's still the same. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's it. We're gonna do show and tell. We're gonna do show and tell. All right. See ya. See ya. At show and tell. All right. We're back with our favorite segment, show and tell. Who's sitting here? Yep. Yeah. Right. I know the battery's dead. All right. So here we've got the Retro HQ, uh, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color Flash Card. Uh, hold on to that one. Oh, that's a good viewing angle. I have. No, I this is what the full package looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the uh, you, you, like a custom shell. He made a nice uh, label. You know, so this is a this retro- is the gentleman behind the the, the Atari Lynx. Lynx. Yeah. Yes, he's also done the Atari Lynx. He's currently working on the Jaguar uh, oh. flash card uh, as we speak. Uh, anyway, so he did Neo Geo Pocket Color. And uh, basically, as you, as Frankie uh, will lament, uh, there's no backlighting to this dumb thing. Um, so here it is. Basically, uh, so you can put all the ROMs that the system had on an SD card. However, uh, I have to, s- uh, where do I switch here? B? Oops. <laughs> oh, that loaded the game. All right, well, that's loading the game. So like most flash cards, it has a memory where it'll play the current thing yeah. that's loaded into it. Well, it has, there's about 16 meg of flash memory. It's loading Sonic, by the way. Sonic Pocket Adventure. So I play this sideways. So there's about 16 meg of uh, flash memory uh, on there that you can load. And, and you know the games load pretty much immediately. 
Uh, however, I don't, I don't know if there's a way. It's a way to get back <laughs> into the. Uh, <laughs> hey, there's Mike's face in the reflection. <laughs> no, that's only a reset. No, I think I gotta sh shut it off. Uh, without the battery, how will you know your horoscope? <laughs> so, I think it loads. Once you've opened it once, it goes back into the memory. All right, so there it is, Retro HQ. Anyway, so it's got the flash there. You've got about 16 meg total to fit games that you load onto there. Now, so you can, put, you can fit more than one into the... Yeah, you could flash. probably fit like seven or eight. Huh. Um... Uh, we're but you could put the whole library on an SD card, though, right? Yeah, so... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, B, which B? Oh, option. Duh. You hit option, and then you can go to the SD card, and then you can uh, fish your way around there. And it's best to put the, the ROMs in, uh, like, folders, uh, smaller folders, because it loads them quicker, you know. Uh, and then there you have it. You know, he has all has all the ROMs. It pretty much, I believe, plays everything. Now, the only thing is, so if you want to, let's say, uh, oh, these are Japanese. I don't know what the hell they are. But let's say you want to play, uh, I don't know, Fatal Fury. Uh, so what you do is you select it from your SD card. Now it has to flash it onto the uh, the flash memory in the in the unit itself. So what the guy had to do was he he put X amount of flash memory that you can write onto, um, and it, it honestly it, it goes slow, and there's really basically he said there's nothing he can do. It's just the way this the Neo Geo Pocket is. So this is like the Pocket equivalent of the, uh, really, the Neo Geo flash cartridge that yes. came out recently. Yeah. Right. yeah, I've heard that that takes a while to load. Well, no, we got one for the store for the. Um, MBS back there and if you do like Super Baseball it's fine it takes a couple of minutes it's still a little too long but then if you do something like Waku Waku 7 which is a, one of the bigger games you gotta go five minutes right yeah you, you put it on you select it you go make a pot of coffee and by the time the coffee's ready you play Waku what? Waku 7 you know what it looks like did that cartridge fix the voltage issues that were making the TV wobble no, because it's I, not wobbling anymore. I figured it out. It was the um, the monitor somehow put itself in a weird setting where it was auto correcting something. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I noticed I I came into Nava and I noticed that the store Neo Geo the TV was no longer like bouncing. It yeah. was doing a weird visual wobble for months. I had this weird thing because we had the um, the original two slot we had in there it got this graphical issue where all the sprites would get screwed up. And we knew that was the system. Then we put that two slot in there, and that's when it started to wobble. We put the old one back in. There was no wobble. So we assumed that NVS had a wobble. Right. And then I found out I just had to hit auto-adjust on the monitor, and it fixed oh, it. Oh, awesome. But I so think it was that. The load times for the NVS and AES the same? Uh, for the ROMs, you know what I mean? It's different for each ROM, but yeah. the bigger the game, the longer it takes. And somebody told me that it could be the SD card. Like, if, if you don't use a certain SD card it could be slower yeah well class, it's not class, uh, terribly slow 20 20 <laughs> well that was a problem that I was having with the right, um, the flash cartridge on the 3DS wow, that took that long <laughs> cause MVS I get it those are like multiple it's mechs. just basically so I don't know he's he, and, wow. but this is Fatal Fury is a little bit bigger and uh, but it starts within you know two seconds yeah, after it's loaded to the memory. Uh, he basically the, the the guy's designed it said it's just it's just a limitation of the system. It's I'd it's believe that whatever bus speed or whatever we're talking about here. There's the, uh, probably some way to. Well, I, I know that SD card class speed and transfer speed absolutely make a difference because I had purchased that 3DS uh, flash card mm -hmm. over the last holiday season when Nintendo released the. Uh, new 3DS with their swappable faceplates for $100. I had, I had to get one, and I bought... I, I kept that one stock. I didn't do a custom firmware on it, and I bought the flash card, and it would crash because I was using a very, very, very slow SD card, mm -hmm. and it constantly needs to access what's on the SD card, and I also had to replace the SD card that was inside the 3DS itself, the, the one that yes. you used to... Because 
the flash card talks to that one, <laughs> and if that's not a matching class ten or whatever the whatever the top of the line, the fastest flash card you could buy now, I think it's class ten. If you don't have that sure. matching inside your 3DS, then you wind up with crashes on that thing. But once I replaced both of those with those, it almost completely eliminated that. I believe so what it, else yeah. do we have? So I went to New York Comic Con, as usual, and they had a panel for the 25th anniversary of Mortal Kombat. They had a okay. number of the principal designers, uh, and I had them sign a, it's a Mortal Kombat 2 uh, uh, arcade flyer that I got off eBay. And yeah, uh, basically, they had Ed Boon, who was the you know primary designer, uh, John Tobias, co-designer and artist, uh, John Vogel, who's the lead artist, and uh, Dan Forden. Uh, what was his nickname? Mike? The Toasty guy, right? Toasty. The, oh, the Toasty That's guy. Funny. He was. Uh, they were all there, and I had them sign that. It was a pretty cool panel. I'm sure a million people made him say Toasty. Yeah. Well. And then they were giving these out. This is a uh, this is Mortal Kombat 25 years, like a keychain. I didn't know they had the 25th anniversary. Is that why they're showing all those videos online now of like the making of? They're showing the I guess screen so. cap. Yeah, yeah. I guess that yeah. makes sense. They released that now because when I was seeing the videos, like, why is this going viral now? Like, how come people haven't talked about this before? But I guess they just didn't yeah. have access to it. Now that's that was the cool stuff. Here's the crap. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Great. Ready? Really? Leo will be using this, not me, because it's kind of musty. What? It's an R zone. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I'll Awful. Awful. I've never, I've never I, played it. You bought that at the convention? No, I. It was on. It, it. It, was, it was like twenty-five bucks on eBay. I said I just had twenty-five it. bucks. Not worth twenty. I know it's not. It's just funny. Joe has the. Um, oh, you got to pull the thing down. Joe has the oh. one. No, 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 no. The little flip thing in there. The Game Boy version. See that? This. Where? Oh, that, that comes, comes down. down. Yeah. Oh, because that's what you look at. Yeah. No, I thought it was weird. I was looking at myself. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's not very exciting. Better graphics. So that's like Cherry. a. That's what do they call great. those things in Dragon Ball Z? Oh, yeah, yeah. the scanners. Scanner. Leo is over nine thousand. I don't. Do you see anything? I no, see I can't. Anything. Do you know if it works? Yeah, it works. I hear it. I don't see it. <laughs> I hit a different button. I don't know. Oh wait, there we go. Oh, oh what's happening? It plays a reflection yes. up there. I didn't know yes. that. Oh, that's so weird. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's garbage. Uh, yeah, it really is. This is no. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. Cause all it is that's exactly like the tiger handhelds. Yeah, it Except is. Except uncomfortable. Right. Does it play the same games? Because I had a Tiger handheld that uh, played those kind of cartridges. I mean, yeah, they had a lot of Sega arcade. Oh, this is terrible. Well, it's hard to, like, it's right hard to in the center of your head. Yeah. yeah. But that was, like, <laughs> You got that, that uh, squealing yeah, in your ear, yeah. too. Turn it off. Turn it off! Uh, uh, Joe has the, um, the one that's like a Game Boy. It's, yes. It uses yes. those cartridges. Yeah. Yes. But he also... Then, then there was the one... It's a lot more money. There's one that's about this big that has this gigantic, like, like one of those like Game Gear magnifiers, and but oh, it's yes. like it's built in so that it's like somewhat visible. I forget if it's that one or this one. Joe has one and it's sealed, and it drives them nuts because it's for the museum, and nothing's supposed to be sealed, but they can't open it and show what it looked yeah. like in the box because it has a head, like a yes, bubble yes. inside of it shaped like a face so as soon as you open it it doesn't stay in there anymore so you lose the appeal of the package. that one then that's the only one that went that's on your head one. was the original one then yeah that's it and yeah. it pisses them off because you gotta have two you have any more crap well uh, no that was it for me my crap I, I was fortunate it. enough to get my hands on the complete set of the Super Impulse tiny arcades I turned it off there's a switch oh, okay. back so, oh, I see. This is the Ms. Pac-Man. It's a very big switch for such a tiny cabinet. And as you can see, it's shaped like a classic arcade cabinet, unlike some of the other mini arcade offerings that we've seen from the company Bridge Direct. Mm. Uh, you'll find those at Bed Bath & Beyond and Walmart and Target. Anywhere else you could buy useless crap. These uh, have made an appearance at the restaurant tr chain Cracker Barrel Ugh. who also <laughs> hey, hey, they, it's cheap filler it's food good breakfast Garbage. I didn't touch anything it um, just no, no it's a demo Oh, okay. it's like the arcade it has a, an attract mode and it has a light up marquee which is just fantastic I can't 
and you can't really get a good angle on it here. No. Oh. So you can see it lights up, which I think is super cool. Uh, it the the control the joystick on it. Yeah, it'll go to sleep too. Oh. After a while, it saves uh, battery life. Three triple A's. The uh, joystick is a four-way, and it's super responsive, nice and tight. You can actually play a really good game of Ms. Pac-Man, or Pac-Man, or Space Invaders, or Galaxian. Those are the four that are available right now. Um, and what what else is interesting is all four of those games are on every single board yeah. in all of these. So they've all they've already been modified with a four way dip switch. Yeah, the way they uh, change each game, like in factories, there's just jumps. There's right. like four connectors in there, and each one goes to a different game. So they just put switches in there that do the jumps for you. So and this these are, from what I can tell, they're the the games on them are built from the ground up. I don't think they're actual ROMs, but they're complete. They've They've got the attract screens, they've got the intermissions, they've got the high score, uh, they're all one player, there's no two player mode in any of the games. Uh, but but they're great, I mean these, this is about like three and a half inches tall, the screen is maybe an inch and a half uh, big, but it's a great resolution. I mean, and, perfect and it's, ports for what they got to work with. Yeah, and, and the cabinets have the, the artwork that uh, is like the original arcade cabinets it's really great for twenty dollars a piece they're they're excellent they're actually playable a lot of fun yep, yep. Could, you can make christmas ornaments yeah, out of yeah. them you could throw them on your desk at work great conversation starters at parties and what kind of batteries are those used? three triple a three triple a three triple a yeah i suspected that the hardware inside of them was arduino because i i have the arduino tiny arcade which is similar but more expensive, and it has a rechargeable battery in it, and it has a SD card slot where you can add games to it. And I, I suspected that because a this control panel is exactly the same hardware that's on the Tiny Arcade by Arduino. And when they demoed these at Comic Con or Toy Fair or wherever they first showed these off, they were running actual Arduino boards. With the with the tiny arcade and games. Which on which, uh, which games uh, do they have? Pac Man, Miss Pac Man, Galaxian, and Space Invaders. The Space Invaders, I think, is a little. I mean, it's cool that they have it, but it's a little weird at the same time because then they have to get uh, the Taito licensing. Yes, yeah, so because everything else is Namco. Yep, Namco and Taito. Yeah. But uh, you know, these companies like making money, so yeah. they're they're you know, Namco has never shied away from licensing. And as of lately, Taito has been oh, really yeah. whoring out Space Invaders. Yeah, you got the intermission. He, and and Leo's playing it upside down, and he got to the intermission. <laughs> I've fixed a lot of Pac-Man machines. And see, you've got the alternate uh, levels in this Pac-Man. You've got the the blue stages, and then it goes into the the, the third color, whether pink or orange. Yeah, I'm curious if it has the kill screens. <laughs> well, Did they make it that perfect? I don't know if the batteries will last long enough to get the kill screen. Uh, they probably will. We'll just have to modify it to use an AC adapter. Rip or open. I'm sure <laughs> someone will figure out whether or not they have the sc- kill screens. I know has to the ghosts now. don't go in their arcade patterns. Uh, yeah. People have already tried that, and they've stated, nope, the patterns don't work. They also changed something a little bit. The um, I'm pretty sure in the original game, don't the uh, when the ghosts are in their house, don't they still turn blue? Hmm. They they don't turn blue in this. Maybe one. in maybe in a revision, or or maybe they. Change in revision. I, I, I know in regular Pac-Man, at least, if the pack, if the ghosts are still in their house, you get a uh, power pellet. They will still turn blue. They'll just be stuck in there, so yeah. it's useless to you. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that these are actual ROMs. I think these are coded mm-hmm. uh, proprietary, but they're great. They they play, they play as authentic as you would want them to play. So, so yeah, you can get these at Cracker Barrel uh, later. They will be available at GameStop and Walmart. Yeah. I think somebody said they already started tickets. getting them to pop up at uh, Walmart already. Yeah. So. Yep, that's that's it for show and tell. Looks like, and uh, we'll be back as long as I don't get any kind of grave illness again. And even if I do, I got to teach other people how to use the recording. Equipment. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, that's it for for another episode of the Digital Press Podcast. I don't even have a clue what number 
we're on right now. Yeah. Alpha. We don't know what happened to Mike. Zeta. Zeta. Mike, He's Mike disappeared. Mike went into the bathroom and never came no, out. I didn't. Say He's that. in the upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger Things season three. Uh, All right. I think say, they got say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.